Hello and welcome to uh, Die on the Third YouTube channel. Today we're going to be working on making some psychedelic artwork uh, inspired by some cool trippy um, reference artwork that I found on Pinterest. We're going to be making some props that will, you know, we're making them in VR, but we'll be using these for augmented reality. Uh, these will be props, the props that we're using for augmented reality. And so I found these images on Pinterest, placing them around our scene, and we're going to just get right into it. Probably making some cool little mushroom things, maybe make a little frog looking character of some sort, uh, different kind of like plants that look kind of trippy, I think will look kind of cool. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Feel free to join me live on to YouTube where we are currently streaming this. So we are live on YouTube. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to bring in my world center so I can start off things right in the center of our world. And I want to start off with making this here, uh, let's make one of these mushroom looking thingies. So I'm gonna start off with maybe a tool like, uh, we're gonna just go into our layers here, make a new layer. And we're gonna just jump in, grab a, I'm gonna grab a, uh, a, a cube, we'll grab a cube and place a cube, oops, place a cube in our scene. Oh. I'm going to turn off symmetry because symmetry seems to be turned on right now. I'm just going to grab that, turn off layer symmetry, and we'll start off with a cube here. This will be for the stem of the, uh, of the, of the what do you call it, the, of the mushroom. And we can uh, just, you know, grab different phases of it. Oops, let's try that again. Go to edit mode, I can move this down here, and I can grab it, extrude a little bit, extrude a little bit. Extrude a little bit. Awesome. So we got this kind of shape going for us. If we were to smooth that out, we'll get this kind of stem shape. And we can add some edge loops just to flatten out the bottom of it and the top. Maybe add another edge loop right there. Great. All right. Now let's uh, use another cube to define the other surface. All right. Go to edit mode. I'm going to grab the top face and bring it down. And we can grab it and hit the smooth button. And now we can add a couple edge loops to refine the shape. And I'm just pulling the edges here. You see how friendly it is to do certain kinds of sculpture work inside the VR? This is a much more complicated shape, you know, when you do the VR sculpting in, in other third-party tools. But, you know, when it's here, this is really nice. I'm going to switch the lighting just so I can see underneath here a little bit better. Or actually, we can just grab a different color. Maybe we'll make it like a tan there, and then maybe we'll just do a, a, a trippy looking color. Purple there. I think we want some shading information. Great. And let's grab our um, custom HDRI scene and change our world lighting. I don't see where the flashlight is. Oh, there it is. So this can change the light on our on our character or our prop. Uh, we just need this one little mushroom here. I'm going to go ahead and grab both of these and duplicate it. And actually, I'm going to grab them, duplicate to the side, and then we're going to make another variation of it. So I'm going to go to the top here and make this one a little bit taller and almost like a bell sprout kind of looking thing. individual faces and bring them in together. It's very fun to sculpt in VR. This application is free and it's called Gravity Sketch and I honestly use it a lot. I use it a lot because it's such a such a practical tool. Alright, so that's version two. Let's make another uh, different one. Make one. This one's going to be a lot flatter. So I'm going to grab these, bring them down, grab the top, bring it down, then grab our loop selection, grab this outer loop, and expand it with my thumb. Maybe give it a little bit of a swivel or a tilt. Turn off loop selection, grab that top plane. Maybe grab a loop selection again, go to line edge detection, grab this line. And we can kind of round it off a little bit, just changing that angle. Put this guy over here, 
And so this is how I would go about making a lot of like my props before doing set dressing. Okay, let's make some really tall cur uh, curled ones. So I'm going to duplicate this one and set this up way higher. And then the same idea, we're going to go to the top here and I'm going to grab the top, the top four and delete it. Then I'm going to grab the top four again and then just keep hitting the, uh, the shift button. Oh, it doesn't like that. Okay. Okay, I'll just make it that tall and then we'll grab our loop cut, add some loops and then we can just move them you know, man manually. And we can change the width to make the bottom a lot wider. And then make this part a lot skinnier. There we go. And maybe make the bottom a little bit wider than that. Too wide. Let me try that again. Yeah. There we go. Great. Let's make another one. Oh, okay. There's some interesting fungus shapes, like whatever this is. It looks like a. All right. That's kind of a cool S looking one. So my plan is to make a couple of different assets that I'm going to later be animating. We're going to be fixing a bone system in these assets, and with those bones, we'll be able to animate them to kind of move around and dance. So I'm just going to place them along the Y axis, or I guess this is the X axis, as it will be a little bit easier for me to work with these later on as groups. So I'm going to grab them, hit the group button, so now it becomes one prop. We grab this two, hit the group button, now it's one prop. And same idea here. Alright, so we already have a bunch of different assets, which is great. Uh, we've got these four different mushroom shapes. Let's continue. I'm going to jump in and see if there's any questions or comments popping up. Um, I think we're, yeah, we're streaming live on the YouTube. Let me see if there's any questions on Instagram here. Um, we got, so I don't see any questions. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go right back to it. All right, so another kind of cool shape that I see happening here is, let's see, let me unlock the, uh, I'm gonna unlock the layers. All right, so we can grab this now and move it around. Um, see a lot of cool different shapes. Oh, well, this one's interesting. It has like these like things underneath it. This is like a big giant one. So I'm going to try to replicate that one now. So I'm going to move this one over here and we're going to break the grooving. I'm going to give this one a different color because this is going to be a different breed of the mushroom uh, example. So I'm going to put this one up here. And then what we're going to do underneath the mushroom is grab the bottom uh, base and extrude it. There we go. And then give it a couple of little edge loops. Take that edge loop and minimize it. Go to edge detection. Grab this loop and put that there. Almost looks like a flying, flying saucer. Okay. And I'm just gonna pull that over there, pull this over here. Okay, so just a different, different kind of shape. And same idea, I'll give it a slightly different stem as well. Kind of just spacing it out a little bit. Awesome. Okay, so already we have, I'm gonna group that. Already we have a bunch of different mushroom templates. Um, that would be great. We can spawn these up randomly. Um, I also saw some other interesting plants. Look at these ones that have like these spears or whatever growing out of them. So for this one, I'm going to use a slightly different set of tools. We're going to jump in. This tool is called the, the stroke tool. And the stroke tool is pretty sweet. It lets you create really nice organic flowing shapes like that. Uh, actually, I take it back. That actually might be too heavy of a tool. Sometimes it doesn't do a good job of reducing polygons. So I'm going to make maybe this this little, this little thing now. So let's make them a little bit larger so we can see them in our space. And uh, create some weird little L thing. Okay. And I'm going to take, oops. I'm going to take this shape and we'll smooth it out by hitting subdivide. Turn that on. 
Great, it looks kind of like a pickle. Uh, I'm going to delete the bottom face so it goes to a flat point. Okay, so we've got this one here. And then we're just going to duplicate this a couple of times, changing the scale and rotating around our scene so that we can create like a little, uh, little area where these kind of stem from. It's the same shape over and over again. Awesome, awesome. Cool, and then I'm going to take this whole object and then group it together. And now we've got another little bushel, which we could use for things. Okay, let's make a two-dimensional version of the same thing. So for this one, I'm going to use the uh, perimeter tool here. Just create a nice little plane, rotate that plane. And we've got to imagine this as you know a plane for the leaf to sit on. So I'll just kind of uh, extend it shrink it down bit by bit. It's a very small, very lightweight model. And we duplicate it a couple of times. These become like little pieces of grass, essentially, that we can use in a myriad of different ways when we're in our other editing programs. Cool, I'm going to grab all this and then Move that together. I'm going to keep subdivisions turned off there. Just want to group them all. Okay, so we've got the plants. Um, this one looks pretty cool. Looks like a I think we might have luck if we use the ribbon tool or the surface tool to make that one. Kind of looks like that. I might do it a slightly different way. Or we might be able to get away with that as a texture. In which case we should probably use the volume tool to create the volume on the top first. Oh, but we can't keep isolated shapes. It's just going to go to the maximum. All right, maybe not that one either. Okay, we'll go back to, let me do this one again. Let's see, a surface from spline. Let me see, what does that one do? No. Um, low poly. Low poly. Mix input mode, bridge curves. What is this? I don't, I don't know if this, I don't know if that's doing. I don't use this one too much, this particular tool. Oh, well. Okay, so right trigger plus left trigger gives you a point. And then is this polygons? Oh, it is. So you can make really nice uh, curved, curved surfaces this way. That's pretty cool. Okay. Got it. All right, I think I understand how this tool works. So what we can do with this thing is I'm going to flatten out that and create some something weird. It's so interesting. It's like a it's like a bending. I can't describe how this thing is working. It's tripping me out here. Okay, so I imagine this shape, when smoothed out, will look pretty sweet. There we go. That kind of feels like that thing. I just want to see later on what, what that geometry is going to look like. I'm curious if that's going to be helpful or if this was a, a messy, a messy tool to to work with. Right now, I'm grabbing all the planes in the bottom to kind of bring them to a point, so that all of these, for the most part, fan out. We go to just the edge mode. We can grab these edges and really refine the curves. 
get them to be wrapping in on themselves in, in cool ways. Trying my best not to have them intersect that much. I'm just going to maybe duplicate it a couple of times. Comments that are popping up here. Okay, no questions I'm seeing on either. So we'll continue. Um, okay, another shape. I like these little sphere like things. So I might start off with a cube. Actually, is that the best shape to start with? Maybe. We'll see. So we have a cube, and then I'm going to take this cube and, and uh, split it. is start off with the cube, go to edit mode, and then just delete the bottom face. And then when we round out that shape, looks like that, we can add a couple of edge loops somewhere. I can make the top a little bit wider. Something like this. I need to subdivide it on one more level. I'll keep it minimal for now. And then maybe I'll make it a little bit taller. later. And then we'll make, make the, the torus be the top shape. Of something that would be like underwater a little bit. Okay, I like these things, these pink. Looks like almost like wine cups or wine glasses, sorry. Uh, I'll use the revolve tool set to low poly.
Actually, I might want to do this a little more wobbly. So I'm going to delete that. Do it with a, uh, a cube instead. Bunch of looking alien looking plants. Look. Uh, I'm gonna copy maybe just this shape over here. Oh, yeah, okay, let me try that again. Um, I like this sphere thing. So, same idea. I'll start off with a cube that we then tick and multiply it a little bit, then make a little ball, and then dive into that ball. Cool, and then we round it. Um, and make the top a little bit wider. Okay, and then we'll bring in a sphere.
They have all these kind of alien looking plant systems now. These ones are kind of cool. They're all spinning like. Oh, I like this little S. It's like seaweed almost. Let's make that. I'll make it out of like a red material. So for the seaweed thing, it starts off. Uh, we just got to go to edit mode and just like block out. Whoa. Actually, I'm going to bring these in. shape I like how it turns into like a ball at the end, which is kind of cool. All right. And then we'll smooth it out with subdivisions. And I'll turn this into less of a rectangle at the top, more of a ball. add some more dimensionality to it. Now if you're ever into the situation where you're, it's starting to look a little uneven, they have this smoother tool and you can just kind of draw back over your design and it smooths out the average angle that you were trying to draw. And you can see what it does in tight, you know, tight areas like that. You can smooth out your your stroke in 3D. This could be great for making like 3D lettering and stuff. And then uh, we'll make a little ball at the end out of a different red color. We'll subdivide this thing. Maybe I'll put like a couple of them. It's like some alien grapes. and take the whole thing and then uh, just merge it together and then we just kind of need to copy it a couple times and change the scale and the overall proportions make a frog. Let's bring up our frog reference. Okay, so I made a bunch of 3D assets of mushrooms and little plants and vegetation. Now I want to spend a moment to make a frog, a full-on frog. Um, this looks like a really good reference. Just to save on memory, I'm going to make it on a new layer and then hide my previous layer, which had all that other design work. Or I can just keep that on and actually, I do need to see my reference here. So I'm going to grab this reference image and put it on the layer three. So that when we hide all the others, we're just left with the frog and the mushrooms. Okay, so let's make a frog. Uh, it would be great if I had a, another reference. Uh, I'm going to start off symmetrically. So I'm going to go to the plane tool, and then I'll make the frog. Um, let's turn on symmetry here. Okay. 
So yeah, let's let's see. There's, one, there's another reference I have of a frog somewhere in here. Put that on layer three as well. So to make a frog, I see a lot of different angles happening here. I'm actually going to start off with the eyes and work my way kind of backwards, actually. So if these are the eyes kind of facing forward. Oh, I'm going to go on a different layer. Hello. New layer. Walk all the other layers. So yeah, I'll start off from the eye, just kind of facing this way. And if we kind of push that out, push that in, we have like a little eye socket. Next, I'm going to grab the loop selection here and kind of uh, widen it as it gets to the main frame of the head of the character. And then we can start to pull on other shapes. Let's grab that. This will be for the throat area. This will be for its back. And yes, yeah, for whatever part of the frog this is. So I just turn on the smooth modifier just so I could see what the what the frog shape is gonna look like right now. I'm widening the mouth. I'm gonna make the skin above the eye a little bit bigger. Kind of hard for me to see the lines with this paint color. So I'm going to temporarily change it to something that makes it a little bit easier for me to see the lines on it. Still kind of hard to see. Um, maybe I'll make it gray.
close it here. Close it down. There to there. There to there. Oh, great. Right back, right back. Right back. Right back. It'll be easier for me to rig this if the mouth is open to start. temporarily move the arms away from the frog mount so that this too will also be easier to uh, rig once we get to that part in time. Oh, come on in. Oh. Hello? I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. Are you live? Yes. Oh, okay. I was just going to go rest and come back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go pick up the birds. Oh, yeah. And uh, get some bird food on the way back. And uh, that's it. Oh, I'll see.
assim, não vai ocupar. Acho que ele não tem lá, né? Calma, não. Deu um assim, tudo? Aqui, pode assustar. Um, it's short. That'll be great. Um, I'll get whatever you're having. You got it? I'll get two. Okay, sounds good, ready? Let me know. Oh, I love you, Mike. We got some, we got everything. We have our, our weird frog. I'm gonna make 
make sure that everything on the frog layer is grouped. Okay, I think we have everything we need for the, uh, the trippy AR experience. We have a frog that is ready to be rigged, kind of, sort of. We have this uh, set of mushroom things. And one thing that's really nice is when you design in VR for an AR application, a lot of these assets are going to be game ready in a sense where we don't actually have to optimize them too much for them to, uh, to perform really nicely. We all need to do some levels of optimization, but a lot of it can be uh, avoided just because we have made... Oh wait, we've got some questions on Instagram here. Um, uh, Dylan says, what's good? Oh, and Buddha says, nice work. And Josephine says, frog fire. <laughs> Thank you all so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm just making some psychedelic assets for another AR filter idea I had. I um, wanted to use the LiDAR scan uh, scanner to um, Actually, might, I might do the frog in ZBrush. I don't know if I'm, I'm too happy with the way this frog came out. Oh, the eyes are uh, detached. Yeah, I might, I might do the frog somewhere else. Yeah, and it feels, like since the frog is so organic, it might be a little bit easier to make that in um, a different tool. But anywho, what we're gonna do is uh, save our scene. Call this mush. Room frog. Make sure that that's saved. Great. And then I'm going to export this whole scene out as an OBJ. We center it. Oh. And then um, export that. Mushroom frog. Make sure it's loaded. Upload success. Great. And now we're going to export it again as an FBX file. Sometimes that helps with textures and stuff. And done. Okay, so with those two versions saved, we can take ourselves out of VR and uh, jump into desktop mode. <laughs> Let me fix my hair. Look at this. It's like center parted. So welcome back. Uh, we're now we're currently streaming to YouTube as we speak. Um, oh, it says, but can you animate in Gravity Sketch? Uh, no, not yet. I wouldn't be surprised if that's coming though. But I don't know how big their development team is. I only know one person on it, and I assumed their team was small because of that. But uh, anywho, here we are. So once you're done with that step, with that phase, what we can do is bring it into here. So if I go to my landing page stuff and log in, um, we, can, we can basically go into our recents and I could download that, that Mushroom Frog um, FBX. So I can just click on it and then go to download. Cool, so that's being downloaded there. Awesome. And if we open this up, it should just open up in any 3D viewer. You'll see the low poly version, the unsubdivided version will appear there. And it all looks kind of like garbage, <laughs> but that's because this is the non-subdivided model. We're also getting all of our references that we brought into there in Gravity Sketch. Um, so just giving you ideas of what things would look like. And then what I'm going to do is bring that data into Cinema 4D as we do. Um, just wanted to say, hey, welcome. <laughs> Actually, I just got the new version of Cinema 4D, so let me take a moment to use this to start getting familiar with the new version of Cinema 4D, version R25, um, I think. Is this it? R25? No, it's R24. Um, let me look up Maxon. There it is, R25. It's the newest version. They've totally changed the user interface, and I want to start getting familiar with it because it's what they want to do for the future. It honestly looks a lot more like Blender now with how they set up all the new UI. So it's, they're copying Blender. But um, hello, welcome. Welcome back to the live stream. We are live streaming to YouTube and to Instagram at the same time. 
Uh, I should probably get a charger for the phone in a minute. All right, so yeah, let's bring in our FBX file and see how it how it works. So we uh, we downloaded it. I'm going to drag it into the new version of Cinema 4D and hit OK. All right, here is our scene. We're at, we're looking at it at you know a pretty weird angle, so I'm just going to toggle around here. And first thing I want to do is maybe subdivide all of our groups. Um, also, I'm going to get rid of all my reference images. I don't need them anymore, so I'm just going to grab holding shift to select everything. Is that all of them? Yeah. I'm going to delete them. Great, so we're just left with all of our geometry. But you, what you can see is the low poly versions of it where we were, you know, before we smoothed everything out. So I'm going to smooth everything out now by grabbing the subdivision surface tool and making everything a child of it. And look at that. Now we have all of our smooth, our smoothed out surfaces. All the things that we sculpted in VR are now here in our desktop space, which is really helpful. Um, I don't like the way the frog came out at all. I might just use a frog online uh, from Sketchfab or something. Or maybe I'll just model one in ZBrush. I think I'll feel a lot more comfortable in ZBrush. Um, have you ever thought of selling 3D assets on Unity Store? Ooh, I thought about it and then I forgot about that thought. And then now I'm thinking maybe we should do that in the future. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and display our lines so we can see all of our line shading. Yes, yeah, so you can see the topology on, on everything. Also, it looks like our assets are really small, so I'm going to bring up a standard six-foot-tall human. Oh, wow, these assets are super tiny, so I'm going to grab all of them and scale them up until these are the size that I would like to see them at in AR. Uh, I think I'm going to redo the frog. I really don't like the way the frog came out, to be honest. I thought it was going to be cool, but then um, not feeling the way the frog is here. Especially when I see it in reference to the other objects, it just doesn't blend very well. So I'm going to redo the frog right now. So I'm going to go to File, Save Project. Uh, I'll save this as um, uh, where we'll save this in the 2020 thingy, and then make a make a frog mushroom frog. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to make myself a little bit smaller so I can see the UI a bit better on the live stream. How many passes did you use for render settings in Cinema 4D? How many passes did you use for render settings? Um, I don't use Cinema 4D's native renderer at all. I just use Redshift um, for a lot of the a lot of that work. Okay, so let's make a frog in ZBrush using a really cool tool that doesn't exist in VR yet, but if it does, if ever, if, if this tool that I'm about to show you, if this ever exists in VR, it'll be really, really nice. It would be like a game changer. It's called, the, um, the tool is known as the Z-Sphere, it's this red sphere thing. And it lets you build models really quickly by adding like topology on them, and then you can like move these things, and if you press A, it turns that into geometry. And so they actually have a lot of pre-made models of animals in here that you can start off from. So I'm going to go to the Z Zoo and look at all these different creatures they already have kind of blocked out as starters. Um, I'm going to look for a frog. If they have a frog, they should have a frog. There's a lot of creatures in here. Is there a search? Can I search for frog? Frog. I don't, I don't know how to search the, the zoo, the zoo of, of creatures in here. But when sculpting creatures, it is helpful to start from one of these Z zoo assets because you can like, you know, you can, you can modify it so easily. Um, but I'm trying to see if I see anything that looks kind of like a, uh, I don't see anything that looks exactly like a frog. Hmm. Okay, no worries. We can always just build our own. I was just trying to save a couple steps by finding a frog to start from, but I don't see one. All right, so I'll minimize this or hide this. 
we'll just we'll, we'll, we'll make it ourselves. So um, frogs, frogs, frogs. I have some reference images here of some frogs that I thought looked kind of cool. So looking at this reference here. Trying to get familiar with all the uh, hotkeys again. So what this tool lets you do is create these like um, spheres that are connected with more spheres and you can use this to pretty quickly block out character designs. Need, I, need, I think I might need some help with the frog here. <laughs> um, let me see if there's any free frog models that I can start off from and then maybe sculpt on top of. So um, I'm going to look up frog 3D model on Turbo Squid. Free frog 3D model. Yay. Oh, these are great. Free 3D. I think I already have an account on here. Oh, I don't know my password. Did I just use Google? Okay, this one's great. I might just use I might just use this one. I mean, I'll paint on it something different. But I do kind of like simplicity. Okay. I'm going to put this frog with the other frog stuff. OBJ. Oh wow, it even has a UV, UV map. Wow, it's, that, that would save a lot of time if we go with this frog. That would save a whole lot of time. It's really tempting to use this now. Okay, I guess I'll modify it a little bit. I'll make it more alien so I can justify changing it a lot. Alright, so let's get rid of my awful frog and import a much better frog. So we'll go to Tools, Import, and look for that frog. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. All right, so we're going to take that frog. First thing we do is rotate it 90 degrees and uh, take a look at its hierarchy. All right, so it's all looks like this is all one bit of one bit of geometry here. Oops, I rotated incorrectly. Let's try it again. Go to our rotate parabolic. Cool.
I have forgotten all of my ZBrush shortcuts. All right, we're gonna go to the transform, turn on symmetry. And then we gotta tell it what dimension to be symmetrical in. Oh wow, it has really clean topology. So what I'm gonna do is maybe not add too much to this, um, but just do a couple of little, little tweaks and changes. Using Corona render. Oh, that's the that's the one that's built right in, right? To be honest, I don't think I need to modify this one at all. Let's get out of ZBrush. That frog looks great by itself compared to my awful frog. <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of this guy. He's he's done. <laughs> frog is super tiny in here. We go to that frog and then we're going to scale it up by maybe a thousand times or a hundred times. Let's do a hundred times scale. Cool. And then for its materials, I don't see the material panel. Looks like they moved that for Cinema 4D LSI. There we go. Frog. And copy the material over here. Copy and then go to here. Does it paste? Yes. It looks like it does. Cool. So let's just put this frog. I'm going to repaint the frog something else. But just for now, uh, I'm just working on animation and stuff. Push this together. Make another null object. And make the null tied to the frog and our subdivisions. So now we can take this single null object and scale up our whole scene so the frog is closer to eye level. And then we're going to uh, work on one of these mushrooms here. I think this one looks pretty fun to work on. Gotta find out which layer group it's in. Nope, these are plants. Where are the... Looking for the right geometry layer. Okay, so that's that one. That's that. So that means... That's the second, this is probably the third here. Or it's the fourth. There we go. Okay, so this object. I'm gonna grab this group and take it out of subdivisions so that it's the only one being subdivided for a moment. I'm gonna take a look at our subdivision object and then display our lines. So that's a lot of subdivisions. Maybe we can do half of that. I think it'll still look good, keeping the resolution a little bit lighter, a little bit, a little bit less weight. I'm going to go ahead and merge that down, connect objects and delete. So we're just left with one. All right, no, actually, I just wanted to do it to just these two objects here. And then 
we'll take that out of the group. Connect objects and delete. All right, so now we're just left with this single mushroom here. And I'll hide the other ones. There we go. And then we'll grab our new, our new one and move its anchor point. Oh, they changed the anchor point tool. Um, what does it look like? Um, I'm going to switch to the old layout for just a second so I can see it. Enable access. Okay, they call it enable access. Okay, so we're just going to place that at the base of the mushroom and let's see what enable access is. Let's go back to our new, our new standard layout. Okay, so they just have it at the top of the screen there. That's nice. So we're going to place this mushroom on the ground plane. Scale up the frog a little bit, place them on top of the mushroom. I'm going to use the new auto place tool if I can see it, or dynamic place. There we go. Oh, we need to change the axis. That's ne uh, let's do negative z. There we go. So now we can actually place the frog and it collides with it, which is really helpful for placing. Right now it has about a little bit of a buffer. What if we make the buffer on the z, x, y, z? Um, minus one, about minus four. Does it occlude with it at all? No. There we go, so that's at minus eight or ten. Oh, we should probably rig it first before doing all the spin stuff. Oh, you said press L. That would do it. <laughs> okay. So we could make a really basic rig in here. I'm debating what the best route is to do this on. Actually, to be quite frank, I'm a little hungry right now and I can't really focus. <laughs> so I'm gonna end the live stream. Um, yeah, because I need to get some food. I'm really, my stomach's grumbling and I haven't really eaten much today at all. And it's like the late afternoon. So. I'm gonna grab some food, but that's how you can kind of at least go from VR to AR. Um, we didn't really get too far into the AR part, but once you have something in these 3D programs, you can then play with them and start modifying them and adding you know, parameters and subdivisions. Um, and what, I, what my plan was, and still is, is to turn each of these into like really pretty assets and then use the LiDAR scanner template that comes in Snapchat's Lens Studio. And what I'll do is I'll have different types of geometry spawn based off of what the camera sees. So if it sees what a floor is, it will grow like this kind of vegetation. If it sees a wall, it will grow these. If it sees a roof or a ceiling, I mean, it will grow one of these. And so they have a really great template that can do all that. And you just feed it geometry. Um, and I was going to add like a, you know, a trippy looking frog um, that has like the, the throat thing that does like the pulsing underneath the frog's throat. It's kind of, um, I was going to do it as a blend shape where, you know, we, we grab the frog. I would go into my sculpting tools and show you an example. Go to grab our frog and go to the inflate brush. What I was going to do was inflate 
just the bottom of the frog, uh, just the bottom of the frog's jaw, and then turn that into a blend shape. Right, so it'd be like a big old lump. And then that'll be a blend shape that we'll be able to blend between and animate in Lens Studio. And so I was gonna have that pulsing on a bunch of psychedelic looking uh, mushrooms. Believe it or not, never done any drugs like this. But I've seen lots of movies, I see the references, and I thought that'd be kind of a cool thing to see in AR glasses. Would be like whatever you look at starts to spawn different psychedelic plants and animals. Um, but we'll need to, it's going to take a little bit longer than I thought to rig this character up to, to do that. Um, but I just wanted to kind of highlight that briefly. Yeah, the hypno toad, exactly. <laughs> um, I have experiences, I have experiences with that template if you need help. Oh, thank you so much, Buna. I will, I'll definitely ask if, I, if I'm struggling. Um, it will be helpful to hear your feedback. But yeah, this should be pretty fun. Um, we're going to paint all the assets to look pretty photorealistic and stuff too, or glowing. There'll be particles that will look like the spores uh, emanating from the whole room. And yeah, and, and then essentially each plant, I want to have movement attached to it. So like I'm going to rig this thing so that it actually kind of like, you know, bounces and moves around a little bit. Um, like it's like everything's living and, and even these might pulse or something. So that's the plan. Um, but I'm just going to pause for now because I'm really hungry and need some food. But thank you all so much for tuning in. If anything, you learned a little bit about sculpting in VR and then bringing assets in and then subdividing them inside of uh, Cinema 4D. A lot of those same principles should apply, should apply really well in Blender. They should apply and follow really nicely in Maya or 3ds Max. So thanks for tuning in. And I'm going to go ahead and end the stream here. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll pick this up later. All right. Bye-bye, everybody.